Welcome to part three of our Valvoline engine build series where Joe and I, mostly Joe, are gonna be slamming this thing together. As you would have seen in part two, Joe has already gone ahead and clearanced all the side seals and the corner seals and all that. So these are now fully assembled rotors. Yes. You have just installed these oil control rings. Yep. Which is a pretty straightforward process. Yep. It looks like there's like a dowel in there to position them. Yeah, there's a dowel in the, uh, the compression ring on the outside one, but the inner ones have the springs with uh, two tabs. One's a, a, a circle and one's a square. And you have to install them correctly because of the rotation. You don't want the rings to spin, so the the spring actually holds those rings in place. Right, and they do have to be installed correctly. Right, and their their role in the motor is to seal oil yep. into keep, the bearing, keep the oil from going out into combustion. Right, so like yeah. an oil control ring on yeah. a piston. Yeah. Okay, and if you're wondering why they look a little uh, slathered up in the corner seals and stuff, you actually use petroleum jelly to just keep everything in place. Yep, yep. and that obviously gets quickly burned just off. Burns off as soon as you fire up the motor. Fire, yep. fire up. So it's it's kind of an assembly loop for you in yep. a sense, isn't yep. it? Okay, so where do we go from here? Uh, we just start with the front iron on the engine stand and uh, start stacking parts. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> so the first step would be to uh, make sure your iron is uh, clean and uh, ready to go. And uh, we'll just apply some Vaseline right to the wear surface and the bearing, just like that. Next step is to put the coolant uh, seals in. So the inner coolant seal is a multi, uh, multi layer. You can actually kind of see the layers right there where they join. Um, that typically goes right near the coolant or the um, intake port. Uh, it's supposed to be the coolest portion of the iron, being that sure, intake, the cooling it. intake yeah. charge is coming in there. Yeah. So uh, that's where Mazda recommends to put it. The outer coolant ring is just a single rubber O ring. And it actually, you do have to kind of give it a little bit of a stretch, just a couple stretches like that. And we'll put it in, in the groove. Stretch there we right, go. It'll sit right it down should there. sit right down in there. The next step is to do uh, RTV silicone on these legs. So your oil pan, this is the bottom of the motor, so your oil pan sits down here. It's strictly just to keep oil from seeping out of the, the joints. Two dowel pins, one top, one bottom. I start these down on the on the top dowel first, get the bottom dowel on. There we go, in place. I assemble these apex seals in the slots with no springs to begin with. It's ready to go. This just goes right into here. I'm gonna set it up so that the point is at the top, 12 o'clock spot. Is that critical or is that just a preference? Uh, preference really. The uh, If you set it up so that one of the points is straight top, the, when the next one goes on, the, one of the points will be at six o'clock. They're just total one off, uh, 180 each other. Before we move on to stacking the next iron on here, it's interesting to take a look at the way the rotor sits within the housing, mm -hmm. where, you can dis where you can see that there's three combustion chambers mm -hmm. through the design of this motor. And the cool part about it is that with every rotation of the rotor, you get three combustion cycles. Mm -hmm. So you spin the eccentric shaft three times for every single rotation of the rotor. So the rotor's going 3,000 RPM, mm -hmm. the crank's going 9,000 RPM, yep. And that's why these motors run so smoothly at high RPM. And it's really what makes the design of this engine so original. That's right, Dave just said the word original, which means it's time for another Valvoline original motor oil moment. That's right, Peter, Valvoline is the original motor oil and the original racing oil too. Lubricating the race winning car in America's first auto race in 1895. Were you the driver in that race, Dave? Very funny, Peter, but just like me, Valvoline is better than ever. It's newly reformulated full synthetic high mileage oil offering 50% better wear protection than industry standards. Now let's get back to the rotary building action. Looks like it's time to drop the eccentric shaft in now. Yeah, we'll set this up. There, that holds your rotor now in place. There's two uh, springs that hold up your apex seals. Um, short one that goes in the middle and then the long one that runs the length and actually holds up the corner. So these have to get installed in the, uh, in the rotors now. All right, we start with the, the short one first. Apex seal's already in, in there. We're gonna put that in. 
in the groove. And I'm going to use an old apex seal spring to actually push this down and seat it. And I'm actually listening for a click. There you go. And now the long one goes underneath it. Basically it pushes down and I'm just going to push it down till it stops. There. The other two apex seals are already done. So now it's time to install these corner seals. So they go with the little foot out. Basically they just slide right in there. Since that long spring is seated all the way down, these should just slide in, no trouble. So now that it's time to put the iron in place, I actually have to lift the E-shaft up a bit here from down below so that he can hook it over the, the big sort of uh, journal area here on the shaft, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna start this one here. Just tell me when to... Yeah, you can start lifting at any time. A little more, a little bit more. I go a little more. There we go. Okay, we're over. So now, will it go down? <laughs> yep. There you go. So. Okay, there. Now I need to line this up with the dowels. And that should be it. Good. Good and job. If, and if a corner seal falls out, we hear it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Generally, you hear like a little ping if the corner seal on. pops out. And yeah. Sometimes they fall inside the rotor housings and then you got to dig it out with oh, a magnet man. or take it apart again. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was keeping a close eye on it. It doesn't look like anything came Good. loose. So. Perfect. As we continue to build the stack here, you can see the process is pretty much the same. Joe's put the two uh, coolant seals in and now he's throwing the dowels in. Mm -hmm. You can also see he's put the RTV in here to seal the oil pan area. And now the next housing goes in. Now we're going to set this down with the point at six o'clock. Right, so they're in opposing exactly. directions. There we go. Okay, we're just repeating the same steps again with the apex seal springs, small one in first. I'll just get them started. And then we'll push them down, listen for the click, and then the long springs. Time to drop the, the back iron on here, which will complete our stack. And as you can see, there aren't a ton of moving parts in these engines, which is part of their beauty, really. It's, it's a very simple and I think quite elegant engine design, but there's still lots of places you could go wrong. So uh, it's nice to see a pro put a motor together for sure. <laughs> yeah. To hold the stack together, we use these very long tension bolts that pass all the way through there and lock them all together. This is the factory one, which you can see has a bolt head on it. And when you torque it down, you obviously twist that bolt head in. And they're quite strong, but they are not nearly as strong as Turbone Engineering's stud conversion kit. So rather than having a bolt head on it, you can see it has this Allen style head. And like a, a head stud on a cylinder motor, this goes into position and then it stays in that position and you use a nut to tighten and stretch the bolt to, to torque spec, which is a much more accurate way to torque than, is, than it is twisting a bolt head in like this. So, this is uh, not only going to give you a more accurate, consistent uh, torque setting, it's also much stronger. And as you can imagine, if you throw a lot of boost into this stack, it'll want to start to come apart. So the, the weaker OE uh, tension bolts will stretch a bit and you will start to, you know, blow the head gasket out. It's something Pete and I have some recent experience with. So this will, of course, keep the stack together much more securely in those high boost applications. And you may be asking yourself, why do you need those if you're not going to run a ton of boost through this motor? Well, Initially, we're not gonna run a ton of boost for, through it, but we wanna future-proof this motor so that if we wanna get really aggressive with it, we'll be able to do that with these Turbolone tension rods. As you can see, Joe is throwing some oil on the threads here for locating them into the stack. And Turbolone does have uh, torque specifications for these. Uh, they're supposed to go into three inch pounds, which I don't know how you're supposed to go that lightly, but I guess it's just finger tight, more or less. That locates it, and then you do your main torquing with the nut on top, which is meant to go to 40 foot-pounds.
So here we've got the front stack assembled. You can see there's uh, washers and spacers and Torrington bearings and a counterweight and some gears, which are gonna drive the oil pump. Yes. And before we install any of that, we need to check end play on the eccentric shaft. Mm -hmm. So that's why this gear yep. is set up here. Set up the dial gauge here and basically you just lift the, lift the flywheel from the bottom and uh, check for the end play. So that's why the flywheel was installed, obviously. Yes. And we've tested the D spacer. Yeah, we had a D spacer from one of the motor, the old motor. Yeah. And this new motor, we had an A spacer. And uh, the D is too far out of spec, it's too loose. Uh, and then we put the A in, and now the A is too tight. Right. <laughs> so there's a B and the C spacer in between, obviously, with you know the working the way I told D is the thickest. Yeah. Maybe there's an E as well. Yes. In any, in any case, we need a C spacer to be within spec. To be within the range, yeah. So I'm going to make a quick run to our local Mazda dealer, and then I'll be right back. Well, we pulled out the A, and I went and picked up a B and a C at our local Mazda dealership. So now it is time to check this end play again. Well, if the math's correct, we should be at about 25, 26 thou, and that is looking spot on there, isn't yeah, it, Joe? pretty good. So we are in spec. Yeah. Joe's just tightening down the bolts on the oil pump here, and don't panic, everyone. How are you gonna get a torque wrench under there? Turns out Joe's got that one figured out, so. It's a crow's foot. Yes. I've never seen one, so. Okay. How critical is it to torque these to spec, Joe? Could you uh, just do these by hand? Be honest. You could probably just do them by hand, to be honest. It is oil pan time, everybody, and rather than using this filthy old one with 10 pounds of sealant on it, <laughs> We are making a significant upgrade to this excessive manufacturing pan, which as you can see is thinned on the bottom for cooling. It's a really nice cast piece and it's very heavy duty. As you can see, the flange on it is extremely thick compared to how thin the flange is on here. And the walls of it are also very thick. So it actually isn't just an oil pan, it's also a stiffener for the motor. It will significantly stiff up, stiffen up the motor and prevent the you know, housings from wanting to walk or split or anything like that. And you can also see it's fully baffled inside and it does add a fair bit of capacity as well. Also uses this O-ring to seal it. And as they say in their instructions, we can also add a thin layer of a sealant on top of that. So we're gonna do that now and then drop it in place. And there you have it everyone. Oil pan is in place, looking good. And Joe just finished bolting down the factory engine mount brackets using the supplied hardware from Excessive, which has to be longer mm -hmm. than the stock ones because this flange on the pan is so thick. Well, Joe's just bolted on the oil filter pedestal here and bolted up the oil metering pump uh, block off plate. Mm -hmm. So that is a wrap really on assembling what we would call the short block, short I suppose. Block, yeah, the keg. The keg, if you like, and it <laughs> does, does resemble a keg. So. Thanks for all your hard work, Joe. We really appreciate it. No worries. It's, uh, it's, an, it's an amazing motor. Yep. It's so unique and cool. It's really fun to watch it come together. And uh, by the way, I should mention, I think we talked previously about this block off plate in the old oil metering system on these motors and how it takes oil from the pan to lubricate the apex seals. Yeah. But by blocking this off, we are instead going to pre-mix oil into the fuel system, which will lubricate the seals. Yeah. And that will allow us to run whatever we want in the sump mm -hmm. And for that, we'll most likely run Valvoline's Racing Synthetic in a, probably a 40 weight. This is a 20W50. We'll mix it with 30 to get down to a 40 weight. That's kind of sure. your recommended spec. Yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of Valvoline, thank you very much, Valvoline, for making this whole engine build possible. We really appreciate your support. And if you guys would like to learn more about why Valvoline is the original motor oil, jump on over to valvoline.com forward slash original, and you'll find all kinds of great info there, including product on their newly reformulated advanced full synthetic and high mileage full synthetic.
funny, Peter. But just like me, Valvoline is getting... But just like me, Valvoline is better than ever. But just like me, Valvoline is better than ever. It's newly reformulated, full synthetic, high mileage oil offering 50% better wear protection than industry standards. Woo! That's a lot of words. Okay. All right. Do it again. Ready? 